Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest evolvement. If life feels overwhelming as fuck right now, you're not alone. This is the feeling that I believe every single person in the world is experiencing to some degree right now. This feeling like I can't just get a break, like we almost are out of the whole COVID thing and restrictions are closing down. And now this horrific war that is happening in Ukraine, and especially when your heart is open, you feel it a lot. Mm. So first of all, I just want to acknowledge your heart for feeling and also congratulate you for keeping your heart open enough to feel because in an often confusing and cruel world, that is such a difficult thing to do. But it's really our greatest work. It's why we're alive here as human beings to feel it all. I remember hearing once that the definition of bliss is actually to feel an emotion in its entirety. So rather than trying to be happy all the time, to let yourself feel and acknowledge the sadness when it is present, the anger when it is present, and riding that wave and letting yourself feel what is underneath that. And even seeing the compassion of how beautiful is it that I can feel for someone else, that I'm able to empathize and connect with another being that seem separate from me, but really is a part of me. So I'm sending so much love to anyone affected by this horrific war and any war around the world. My parents had to flee their country of Iran because of war, the Iran-Iraq war in 1980s. And it created massive trauma for them, which was passed along. So I know the PTSD that happens as a result of war and know that in our hearts, we will, I believe this generation may be the very last generation to experience war. I believe that we came here at this time with this higher consciousness and this ability to feel because we are part of the solution. We chose to be here at this time where it's not that there's more conflict happening than any other time in history. It's just that we are aware of it. You know, if you went back even 100 years ago, people did not know what was happening in other countries and other crises. So we are at this time where our nervous systems are almost overcome and overwhelmed by all of the atrocities that are happening around the world. And I believe that we chose to incarnate at this time for a reason, for us to remember the global unity and the connection that goes beyond our borders and to see that we are repeating the same cycle of one male leader making a decision for the entire collective that puts people's lives in in jeopardy and that we are not okay with that. We are not okay with this two-party system that fuels and thrives off of pushing people apart and making it into almost like a baseball game of what team you're rooting for. We're not okay with that. We're not okay with destroying the environment for profit, for burning down the Amazon and filling our oceans with pollutants and plastics. We are not okay with that. And the only way for us to step up and end these systems of corruption is to first become aware of them. So I give deep gratitude for the internet for allowing us to see a variety of perspectives, including this. And I give gratitude for all of us for choosing to be here at this time with our eyes wide open and seeing it all and seeing beyond even what mainstream media is showing us. It's hard being awake sometimes. It's hard knowing that even what we're seeing in the media is skewed and has its own angle and to be in this place of questioning without losing yourself. So The message that I'd really like to share with you, if you are overwhelmed right now, is to take some time to unplug, to let go of what's happening in the news and around the world, 
and to really tune into your big why of why you are here. Because each and every one of us has a specific solution to a world's problem. And that world's problem may be as big as changing systems of corruption or as small as being there for your family in a difficult time. Not that that's even small, but each and every one of us has a vibrational frequency that we're here to emit. And when we lose ourselves in the news cycle, which by the way, is going to continue, they're always going to point us to the next thing to be afraid of, to stop us in our tracks, to prevent us from living our purpose. So it's important for us to take that time to honor and to be aware without letting ourselves go and giving up on that very thing that we're here to create, which is the actual solution to the various issues in the world that each of us is designed to solve. So the person out there who's listening, who stays up at night thinking about how can we clean the oceans, that is part of your dharma. That is part of your purpose. And the person out there who's thinking about how can we bring meditation to our school systems, that is because your soul incarnated at this time to make that happen. The person thinking about how can we connect people back with nature, there's your soul assignment. It's right there. That person thinking about how can we heal our ancestral lineage and bring healing to our families, you You are the solution of how we're going to do it. So we're not able to really help and be of service when we're just taking in, taking in more information, more bad news, and paralyzing ourselves with fear. Sometimes the greatest thing that we can do to actually make the world a better place is to unplug from the matrix and to replug with our divine why why we are here, how is source asking to be expressed through me? What are the things that I think about that others may not? What are the unique gifts and talents that I was born with? What obstacles have I overcome that I can help someone else overcome? What was my childhood like? What unique lens did I see in a family system that even was corrupted that I can go about in healing and other children who may have been born in these circumstances. Each and every one of us was given front row seats to the very problem that we are here to solve. So if you were born into a family of addiction and you've seen what it's like behind the scenes and and the web that it can create, it's because you are here to alleviate that issue. So rather than looking outside of us and wondering how can I help a world that seems to be crumbling, it's you. It's you having the courage to transmute your pain into your purpose. It's you having the strength that despite being in a noisy world with a lot of haters, to love yourself enough to speak your truth. It's you trusting the inner guidance that's coursing through your veins and letting yourself flow with the divine wisdom that is waiting to be birthed through you. You are the antidote. So right now, this is our time. We signed up for this period of time, this transition that astrologically, they've written about this thousands of years ago, but 2020 to 2027 is the greatest time of the shift that is happening. It is the shift of us moving into a higher level of consciousness. This began in 2020. If you read books about human design, gene keys, the I Ching, it's even printed in these books and you can actually look this up. But 2020 to 2027, we are going to see a lot of corruption coming to light. And this doesn't mean that the world is ending, but it means that we're finally looking at what is not serving us. So again, I'm not able to clean out my closet if I don't take all the shit out of my closet and see what I've had stored in there for the past five years. So right now we are cleaning out that closet. We are seeing some really funky stuff that we did not want to look at that we didn't know we've been holding on to. But by looking at it, we can then clear it. So astrologically speaking, 2020 to 2024 
is a lot of the destruction of the old paradigm. I'm talking financial system, legal system, political system. We can see right now the UN. It's funny because my entire life, I was like, I want to work for the UN. I went to school in DC. I studied to become an international human rights lawyer until I found that they weren't doing anything. We can see that right now. So what are the systems that are going to work? What are the ways that we can actually listen to the people, not just say that, but actually implement it? What are the ways that we are going to raise children in a way that they don't have to do years and years of trauma clearing on the other side just to recover from what they've experienced in their childhood, from the school system that indoctrinates them and teaches them how to work in a corporation rather than follow their dreams? So if you feel this, if you even feel this anger, it's there for a reason. Feel the bliss, feel it in its entirety, because that is what will guide you through. We aren't here to sit and float and be okay with everything corrupt that is happening in the world. We're also not here to lose ourselves in it. We are here to look at it and then trust what is my role in this? I see the food system needs help. I see our air pollution needs help. I see our elderly needs help. What is my role in this? Because you can't do it all. I can't do it all. She, he, they, no one can do it all. But if you can honor your truth, if you can remember the part of the jigsaw puzzle that you are, are you that little corner that is here to bring gardening back to elementary schools? Are you that middle part that's here to connect people with energy medicine who are in hospitals? Are you that centerpiece that's here to help people find their purpose and heal the relationships? What is your part? What is your role? What is your expression? These are the questions we should be asking ourselves, not when is the world going to get better? It's going to get better when we start asking these questions. When we start stepping into our soul's purpose, when we stop waiting for someone else to fix the mess. If you are here incarnated at this time between 2020 and 27, bitch, it's us. (laughs) We are the cleanup crew. We are the volunteers. We are the people who chose to be at this time that it feels like the most heightened tension that we've ever experienced because we are aware of all of the polarity that is happening. We chose this for a reason because it's important for us to learn about it and transmute it. To say, how can I be aware of the pain of the world without identifying with all of it? How can I open my heart without being lost in my heart? How can I live my soul's purpose and then share that with people who never even heard of it and continue to have the courage even when I'm faced with people who don't believe in me and maybe say all of the fears and thoughts that I've had in my head, how can I be stronger to overcome that? That is why we're here. Yes, it's great to sometimes listen to Abraham Hicks and, you know, go with your flow, but really you can feel in your bones you're here for more than just floating. You're here than more to just pass time. You're here to be the example of what is possible for humanity. And the only way that you can do that is to honor that feeling in your heart that you were born for something more than this that you're not here to live the same day again and again and again and to waste all of your free time on social media. You're not here to wait for someone to save you. You're not here to, again, ride it out and wait other, for other people to figure it out. What is your role in this? And it's important for us to also see that other people will have different ideas for us for what our role is. Someone might say, oh, if you want to help, you should be doing this. That's their dharma. That's their job. They get to do that. But you get to honor yourself enough, to know yourself enough, to bathe in your aura, to feel into where can I best serve and utilize my energy? Even if everyone's telling me it needs to be right here, what do I know for myself? To cultivate that level of trust, that level of discernment, because there will be tests. There will be many a times that you think that being helpful is actually doing something that takes you five steps backwards into a lesson that you were supposed to already learn. 
I know I felt it. And ask, ask yourself continually, is this actually helping? Or is this just perpetuating trauma? Is this just reposting things because other people told me to repost this thing, even though I don't really understand it? It's important for us to also rise above this collective social media culture that expects us to be experts in every single topic at the drop of a hat whenever it's trending. You're not. You can't be. You can't simultaneously be an expert in COVID and in Ukraine and in Afghanistan and in Haiti and in every other place. You can't. But what is your heart telling you to dive into? And maybe it's not any topic on the news because a lot of the topics that need the most healing never get any airtime. So what do you know brings you alive? What has helped you in your life? As a child, who did you wish that you had? If you could wave a magic wand, what would exist? And that right there, that's your North Star. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm literally in a sports bra. I was about to do my belly dance practice and I was like, yo, I need to record this solo cast right now. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm super excited because Dharma Coaching Institute is opening doors up again. So if you're wanting to train with me for six months to become a certified soul purpose coach, so that means you get to actually coach people to finding and remembering their soul's purpose. And it's also a double certification to become a spiritual life coach. So doors are opening up next week. I'm so excited for it. So head over to dharmacoachinginstitute.com. That's D-H-A-R-M-A coachinginstitute.com. You'll be able to learn more. I have tons of videos about it, Q&A opportunities. You can hop on a call with one of our enrollment officers to really dive into this experience. And if you are just beginning this question of what is my dharma, what is my purpose, then go get my book, Discover Your Dharma. It's available wherever books are sold, printed in many languages now, Spanish, French, all over the place. And you can also head over to my website, IamSaharaRose.com slash Dharma. You'll be able to find a bunch of links there. It's also on Audible, so you can actually hear me read it to you if that's easier. I know I love listening to some books. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for incarnating at this time. Thank you so much for keeping your eyes and heart open in a time where it can be challenging. I honor you so deeply for being in this space. Namaste. Namaste.